You're watching Drake Queen Gaming. Enjoy the video. Hey guys and gals, Nary here from Drake Wing Gaming, and some of you know me on Twitter, The Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming back at you with another Let's Play episode of A Masquerade in the Woods. So, y'all, without further ado, let's go ahead and jump right back into it, shall we? Alarm Chan, you are up, and let's go! Alrighty. We're still working on the Patreon, y'all. Have patience. We've been really busy with work lately. Anyway, Mason nonchalantly rolls his eyes. Well, obviously, otherwise you wouldn't wake up with your... with your thing stiffer than... Oh god, please stop! I polished you up to cover my face, probably in an effort to hide the blush spread across it. But hey, just let me know if you ever need a paw. But let's just get effing going. I jump out of bed, reaching for my clothes on the bedside table, and quickly pull them on before the snickering possum gets any ideas. I'm just lucky I don't sleep naked. <sighs> okay. With clothes on and an awkward car ride down the forest road later, Mason's admittedly small car slows to a halt near a clearing. Is this it? I turn and ask the possum next to me as he turns the keys. If you mean is this the shooting range, then yeah. Sorry, I guess I was just expecting a building. As he slams the car door, Mason looks back over his shoulder with a nonchalant shrug. Didn't expect us to go to a real shooting range, did ya? I guess that would be a bit obvious. I follow him out of the car, meeting him at the do uh, meeting him at the boot, where Mason grabs his backpack and swings it over his shoulder. I take the opportunity to stretch in the cool morning breeze, feeling that light morning feeling that light morning headache slowly creep back in. God, I really do hate mornings. The trees surrounding the clearing like slowly sway in the wind, scenting the forest with their fresh, earthy aroma. As the wind picks up, droplets of last night's downpour gently fall from their leaves down onto us. I take a deep breath, closing my eyes and rolling my neck, feeling a yawn creeping in. Want an energy drink? Hmm? I open my eyes back up, being met with by Mason's paw, outstretched holding a can. You'll need it. The boss will run you through the ringer. I've never been much for energy drinks, if I'm honest. Though that might just stem from bad experiences mixing it with vodka. He chuckles. Bah! No such thing as a bad experience with vodka. I could always top it off with some if you'd like. He sways the can back and forth, tilting his head with a smile. I sigh, grabbing it and cracking it open. Ugh, man, that tasted something else. The harsh taurine punch, the carbonated fizz, the oppressively sweet aftertaste that leaves your mouth coated in the sticky substance. I remember why I stopped drinking them. Kind of tastes like Red Bull, but sweeter. Mason stops to look at me curiously. Red Bull? That's supposed to be a euphemism for something? What? No, like the energy drink. He shrugs, looking as confused as I've ever seen him. Must be local. He takes a moment to move the crate of energy drinks in the trunk over to the side. Bad experience is mixing it with vodka, huh? Should I take that as you starting to get your memory back? I take another sip, clenching my teeth as the sugary liquid runs down my throat. Yeah, bits and pieces, but nothing concrete. S strange snippets of past events and bad fever dreams. Hell, I don't even know how much of it I can trust. Like my, It's like my brain gets hit with these blasts of stimulus that unlocks a new piece of the puzzle, but at the same time, filling the blanks in, what, in, that, in with made-up nonsense. And it's getting difficult to separate what's real and what's fiction. Sounds... normal? To be honest with you, I don't know shit about amnesia. Closest thing I know is dementia, but I doubt you have that. God, I hope not. Mason closes the boot, grabbing, grabbing a small packet from his pocket and dispensing two white tablets into his paw. By the way, the scent makes me realize it's the same mint I can smell on his breath the first time we met. Want one? He offers as we start walking into the woods. No thanks, I'll stick with this for now, I think. I respond, raising the can in my hand for more emphasis. He shrugs, popping the pellets into his muzzle. So, you're off work today? Mm-hmm. I work every other weekend, which means I'm off today and tomorrow. Oh, gotcha. Must be strange for you to have a weekend off, though. What? Bartenders always work weekends, don't they? Oh, yeah. Though, to be fair, I had no idea what, to, what day it was until last night. Man, I can't even imagine what that shit must be like. Looking up in the woods without your memory, and then that being your first encounter? Sheesh. You don't know the half of it. Just wait till you find out that this isn't even my body. Second, y'all. It is water time. Mm. Or that I'm not even a talking animal. I sigh. I think one of the things that sucks the most is just feeling uprooted. Like, back home, I know where I belonged. I knew where I lived, where I worked. I knew my place in the world. And not only externally, I feel like it's impacting who I am to some extent, too. Or at least how I see myself. 
Here. Here, I feel a drift like I've never really experienced before. Like I'm tumbling down the rapids towards an inevitable waterfall. The possum lets out a quiet chuckle. The raccoon drifting towards World's End. With a possum as his trusty friend. That's deep, man. He snickers, but as I meet his eyes, there's a hint of, there's a hint of sincerity behind them. I think it's the first time I've seen him smile so genuinely. And in return, I do the same. I'm your friend? I ask before really taking my time to think the question over. Duh, of course you are. You're part of the team, Stripe Tail. I smile, chuckling under my breath as I look down at the damp ground beneath us. I guess I just never realized how much your environment impacts your sense of self in a way. I'm sure your memories will come back soon, man. Give it a couple more days and you'll remember just how you ended up here in no time. Just hope it's something I want to remember. Dew-covered grass and thin layer of leaves on the forest floor crunches under our shoes as we make our way deeper. So Shepard's supposed to meet us out here? Yep, well, I bet you five bucks he's already here. I don't have any money to bet, remember? I don't have any anything. The possum rolls his eyes. All right, fine. I bet you one buck. Morning, boys. Oh. As we round a large rock, we're met by the hyena in question, standing in it with his arms crossed, leaning against a nearby spruce tree. Out of sheer instinct just from being in his presence, I straighten my back and gulp. G Good morning, sir. Next to him, some old picnic tables stand lined up, the wood damp and rotting in parts. Further out along the tree line, some makeshift targets seem to have been set up to create the improvised shooting range, along with a group of wooden stalls to create some sort of course off to the side. A bit further out among the targets, a small bench is placed in the wet grass, empty, empty glass bottles lying the top. Yeah, these guys are definitely not dealing with Wayne money. Though considering the budget they're most likely operating on, it's impressive how much they've managed. Sup, boss? How was the hike? I looked from Shepard to Mason, then back to Shepard. You walked here? It was close to a 20-minute drive by car. Can't imagine how long it'd take to hike through the woods to get here. Always does. He's a freak like that. As Mason walks over to the nearest picnic table and drops his bag on it, Shepard gives the possum a smug smile. You should try it. It'd do you some good. No thanks. I get enough exercise chasing loonies around, both at work and at night. Shepard pushes off the tree with a foot and steps over to the table, lifting a duffel bag similar to, uh, similar to Lucas's out of the wet grass. Placing it next to Mason's, he begins unpacking the contents. Guns? A revolver, and what looks more like a traditional handgun. Glock, maybe? I don't know. I don't know jack shit about guns. The possum jumps up and takes a seat on the table, his shoes on the seating bench and elbows on his knees. Tiny? Yes, sir? I step closer, Shepard unpacking some small boxes of what I assume are bullets, while Mason suppresses a snicker. No shooting experience? I shake my head. None except video games, really? The hyena nods, taking the revolver in his left hand. FPS shooters won't do you much good IRL, Stripe Tail. Yeah, kinda figured. Military? No, sir. Shepard picks up a bullet, loads it into the revolver, and closes the cylinder. Then he places it back down on the table and steps back. I look at it. All right, one second, y'all. It is water time. A bit confused, really. Shepard tilts his head, his paws behind his back. Wait, right away? He gives a curt nod, his eyes centered on mine. I gulp, stepping close to the table and pick up the revolver. It's heavy, heavier than the pistol Mason gave me yesterday. A lot heavier, actually. Bit of a large caliber to start off with, don't you think? Shooting's like swimming. When you get pushed in, you either learn to stay above the surface or you drown. What fucking century did you grow up in, grow up in again? Ahina huffs at him, but keeps his focus on me. Fuck, I shouldn't be this nervous, should I? Pick a bottle, line up your sights, and shoot. Mason steps off the table with a little hop, walking over next to the hyena. To stay on balance, I swing the revolver up and lean back, keeping my arms stretched out fully. I take a deep breath, close one eye, and pull off, and pull off the stiff, and pull on the stiff trigger. Nope. I sigh heavily, lowering the revolver. Good. Again. I nod, raising the gun back up. I pull on the trigger again, watching the cylinder rotate. Mason sighs, rolling his neck. How much of a challenge if he can see the bullet? Keep going. Yes, sir. With each hell hollow click, the anxiety of pulling the trigger gets easier. At the same time, with each hollow click, I see the one bullet loaded approach. Three rotations left. Squeeze the trigger. Don't pull it. The hammer eases back. It slams back down again. This is the real one. 
This is when the gun will actually go off. And recoil back into my shoulder. And knowing my luck, probably dislocate it. I feel like I should be wearing some sort of ear protection for this, shouldn't I? Fuck. Alright. Here we go. I close my left eye, keeping the sights lined up as best I can despite my shaking paws and unsteady arms. Oh. Huh? What? Mason bursts out in a snorting laugh, bending back. I lower the revolver, looking at Shepard, stoic as ever. What happened? You fired six times. Yeah, but it didn't go off. Mason attempts to stifle his outburst, managing to speak between giggles. It was a dud, dude. The look on your face, man. That shit never stops being hilarious, I swear. I put the gun down on the table, feeling my cheeks and ears heat up in embarrassment. I can't believe I fell for it. Next to, the next to the giggling possum, the very much not giggling hyena rolls his eyes. You were just as nervous your first time, Ink. His fun is immediately interrupted by a choke before he turns to glare up, uh, glare up at the stoic canine. I was very much not. Besides, Lou was way worse. Now it's my turn to chuckle as Mason's the one in the spotlight. Does this look like you do with everyone? He nods. Hmm. Helps me get an idea of their attitude and fear. Don't mind him. The humor Ink finds in it is just as unfortunate as just an unfortunate side effect. Right then. Let's move on to live rounds. Shepard picks up the smaller pistol, releases the magazine, and begins pushing bullets into it. Mason walks back over to the table and opens his bag, picking out Lucas's mask and two small bottles of what looks like bottled paint. This is a Sig Sauer P226 MK25, 4.4 inch carbon steel non-threaded barrel, chambered in 9mm Luger. Standard curved trigger, stainless steel slide, M1913 accessory rail. I blink. I understood some of those words. He looks down at me with a smirk, sliding the magazine back and then cocking the slide. Today you'll be firing 147 grain HST jacketed hollow points. Nickel plated, brass cased. He holds the pistol out. As I take it and hold it out in front of me, Shepard steps up behind me. Close. Very close, actually. Why does it say giant dick? <laughs> anyway, one second now. Water time. No, probably because he has a giant dick. Okay. Close enough to feel his calm but heavy breathing down my neck. He lifts his strong arm around me, pushing his thumb at the bend of my right arm. Bend your arms when firing. Y yes, sir. For the first time, I see the ink on his forearm up close. An infinity symbol with lines through it. I recognize the emblem on the left, but not the one on the right. As his other paw gently grasps my shoulder, I'm brought out of my thinking and back to the present. And lean forward. You're a lot more likely to lose your balance from the recoil if you're leaning too, if you're leaning back too far. Boy, he sure is hands-on. I glance over at the possum, wiggling his eyebrows with a smug grin across his muzzle. Yes, sir. He taps the back of my left foot with his, making me slide it forward. Leg spread, shoulder distance. Left foot in front of your right. Gun's getting pretty heavy to hold. Hold. Keep holding. I gulp, keeping the position despite the ache in my forearms. And lower it. I let out a big sigh, letting my arms drop. Good lad. He lets go of me, taking a step back. I place the pistol on the table, shaking my wrist to, my wrist to ease the ache. No one told me just standing with guns was so straining. He nods, opening a side pocket on his bag. Hmm. It's more than just clicking a button like in those games. He pulls out a small plastic case of earbuds, handing me two. He offers two to Mason, who puts a paintbrush down on the table to grab them. Arts and crafts? The possum nods, unscrewing the cap, unscrewing the caps of the paint bottles. Yeah, thought I'd try fixing up Lou's mask after yesterday. He holds the green mask up, pointing to a few spots around the edges where the paint is chipped. I didn't realize they were so brittle. We work with what we have. Their main purpose is to disguise. And for that, they're useful enough. Main purpose implies they have more than one. And judging by the material, I doubt they're bulletproof. Mason holds the mask up in front of his face, raising his paw in a stereotypical monster claw. To strike fear into the hearts of our prey, he growls in a deep voice, chuckling as he lowers it back down. Despite the pattern on the dark visor, it's difficult to see it as anything but comforting. After that horrible night in the house, that glowing mask, along with the scent of cinnamon, will probably forever be associated with comfort and peace to me. Weird how smell so easily triggers memories and emotions. Does it really work? 
To some extent, yes. Enough distractions. Ink. Did you bring it? Mason reaches back in his bag and pulls out River's mask, the one I wore last night. Wait, you brought both? He tosses it to Shepard, who once again catches it effortlessly. Yep, not surprised you didn't notice. Some Someone was having quite a spicy dream while I was grabbing him. He winks, flashing his fangs. I turn away, scratching the back of my neck. It wasn't that! I mumble in response. It was actually quite the opposite. But now's not the time to speculate on fever dreams. Shipper grabs me by the shoulder, strapping the mask over my face. What? You're gonna be doing most of your shooting wearing this, so you might as well practice with it. And not as he fixes the leather strap behind my head. Good. Then let's get to it. I put the earplugs in, having some difficulty at first remembering my ears are situated a lot higher up on my head than I'm used to. I pick the gun back up, assuming the same pose as before, taking a deep breath. It's admittedly a whole lot more difficult to get a clear sight picture with the mask on without it. Shepard stands behind me, placing his paws on my shoulder. Elbows down, and I want to see Dan no damn chicken wings. Yes, sir. I pull them closer to my chest, mimicking the stance from earlier as best I can. Safety off. I do as told, remembering Mason showing me how to do it yesterday. I line up the sights. Fire. Oh, all right, I'm gonna pause it right there, actually. Alarm Chan, you have uh, quite the timing on you, girl. Anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and pause it right there. Thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and that notification bell. If a super thanks, or if you can, it always helps. Until the next video, I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.